Welcome to Sky High Harvest. I'm Nastasha. Today's project takes us beyond the realm of edible gardens and into the realm of artistic greenery. While this channel primarily focuses on turning compact New York City spaces into vibrant edible gardens, we are transforming this vintage art piece with this devilish imagery into a symbol of life. It may not be edible, but it's certainly a delightful way to add more greenery and vitality to our home. This is the first of many transformations to come for this new Sky High Harvest YouTube channel, so stay tuned for more plant transformations. My partner Mario and I have been wanting to create this moss wall art for a while. We initially considered buying pre-made moss wall art, but they're expensive and similar size pieces online are selling for $3,000. So we were determined to craft our own masterpiece, but even frames are expensive and the project just kept getting postponed. And then one day while I was meditating, an image just popped into my mind completely random a giant piece of artwork that had been tucked away in our storage unit. I asked Mario what he thought, and we agreed. This would be an affordable way to start this DIY project. Now, we had a free 68 inch by 51 inch frame, significantly reducing the cost for this transformation. So let's discuss this iconic artwork, a classic from the early 1900s by the legendary artist Leonetto Cappiello. Tell me if I'm saying that right in the comments. Look, it's undeniably a masterpiece. However, the devil and booze aesthetic didn't quite match who we are as individuals, as a couple, or the vibe we've cultivated in our home. We've prioritized creating a cozy atmosphere with warmth, hospitality, and plenty of plants. We're hosting events to share the love is a really big deal for us. This piece just felt out of place, and that's why it got put in storage in the first place. Before diving into our art project, Mario and I took the time to plan our design. While some might prefer to go with the flow and discover the art along the way, we're just more on the planning side of things. We found inspiration online, exploring various moss wall art pieces, and let me tell you, there are a lot of ways to do this. But that's where the artistic fun comes in. So we opted for a predominantly green palette with pops of white and lighter tones to keep it vibrant without getting too dark. We wanted a mosaic-like design, something with character and charm. And planning ahead also helped us realize that we underestimated the amount of moss we'd need. We ended up purchasing moss four times before we had the amount we needed. And our goal ultimately was to create a full, lush piece with plenty of dimension and layers. So I wake up at 3 a.m. on the morning of our transformation day with this really weird feeling that we might not be able to take the print out of the frame. First, to even see the back of the frame, we had to relocate all of the moss to a different location. When you're in the design process, find another surface to work on that's the same size as your frame. Designing the moss on the frame directly created way more headache than necessary. Next, we removed the plastic protection to see how the print was secured to the frame. And my intuition was right. There were a lot of staples, probably around 100. After some quick research, I found a lifesaver, a professional who made house calls. If you're in New York City and need any help with framing, conservation framing services, incredible customer service. Okay, finally, we start the fun part. We laid the frame flat on the floor and set up all our materials. With the glue poured in the plates, we carefully started adding the moss. As we found our rhythm, the process was so much smoother. There was a bit of a learning curve with the Mod Podge glue as we'd never used it before. It definitely took some trial and error. Oh, and quick tip, gloves are worth it when handling the moss. Not only do they protect your hands, but they also prevent any potential cross-contamination of dyes between different moss colors. And then they make handling the glue so much easier. We went through a few pair of gloves during the process. We began by following the design we outlined, starting from the perimeter and gradually filling in the gaps. Having two tape measures helps to accurately transfer the moss. Pre-drawing the design directly on the cardboard might have streamlined the process, but we didn't think about that until we we're pretty much almost done. The black frame will seamlessly integrate with the modern aesthetic of our apartment. Although the frame could benefit from a fresh coat of paint in the future, for now, it blends in well with our existing setup. Repurposing a frame we already had not only adds a unique touch to the artwork, but also aligns with our philosophy of sustainability when possible. 
Now, let's talk about the moss itself. It's harvested from forests and preserved using non-toxic food grade ingredients. Because it's preserved, these mosses won't wilt, they don't need water, and they don't release any pollen or spores. It creates an evergreen masterpiece, a plant painting, if you will, that looks stunning and requires zero maintenance. We use several different types and colors to create depth and texture, and we even splurged on some premium moss in the shape of mounds for added depth. For those wondering where to buy all these supplies, don't worry, I got you. Check out the links below. I did extensive research and we're thrilled with the quality of the moss we purchased. And to finish it off, we added five small branches, but we didn't want them to look perfectly symmetrical. Instead, we wanted a more abstract approach. Adding moss on top of the branches not only provided an extra layer, but also enhanced the overall abstract feel. We used a hot glue gun to secure the branches in place, Hot glue guns often come with short cords, which can be cumbersome when you are working with a big piece like this. Make sure you have an extension cord handy. Our initial design, which included feathers and fake moss, it just felt a little like we were gilding the lily. We returned those items. Having the option to add those things in the future could be a way to breathe new life into the artwork if we ever feel like we need to change. And maintaining your moss wall art is really easy with just a few simple tips. Preserved moss doesn't need watering and should be kept away from direct sunlight to prevent color loss. It's best suited for indoor use and should be kept in a dry environment to maintain its appearance. But of course, always check with your supplier for specific care instructions tailored to the moss you've purchased. And if you're inspired to create your own moss wall art, give us a thumbs up and share your creation with me over on Instagram. I'd love to see it. After a week, we realized that we were a little too eager to hang our moss wall art up immediately after it was finished. The Mod Podge glue requires some patience to dry. Over the next few days, pieces started falling off. Eventually, one of the heavier branches came loose. So we took the entire artwork down to do some light repairs. The branches were oddly shaped to look realistic, so it took some maneuvering to ensure they stayed in place. We used some extra moss, even bits that got mixed together, to fill in the gaps beneath the branch where it wasn't flush against the surface. Then we glued the moss down with Mod Podge and then hot glued the branch on top of the moss. This provided a more stable base for the branch to adhere to. And I'm happy to report that weeks later, it's still holding strong. Let's talk about the cost of this transformation. We spent $193 on over 10 pounds of moss, $40 on branches, and approximately $37 on glue. Hiring a last minute technician added $212 to the total. And despite unexpected cost and buying way more moss than anticipated, the entire project cost less than $500. And though that's still a lot of money, it's significantly less than purchasing a $3,000 art piece of similar size. We could create six moss wall art pieces for the cost of one pre-made. And yeah, we're already planning to repurpose the plexiglass from the original print for another moss wall art project. So comment below if you'd like to see that. So there you have it. Our journey from vintage print to stunning moss wall art. We couldn't be happier with how it turned out. And we hope that it inspires you to get creative and bring a little greenery into your space. Stay tuned for more from Sky High Harvest. We have so many plant transformations coming your way. Like, subscribe, and all those things to keep updated. And until next time, stay high with plants.